All right, still here playing for round two. Playing Abzan Maverick, so graciously provided by Alex. My opponent for round two is going to be Christian, who is playing the Karn Echoes deck. The Yeah, that's what I found it to be called. Going to start off four mana. Playing a Chrome Mox Exiling Seagate Restoration. Gonna play a turn one Urza. Pretty pretty decent turn one there. Sword Supply Share is gonna take quick care of it though. Now the Karn Echoes deck never really took off. And not quite sure why that is, but that is what has happened. Now, even though I got rid of the Karn here, I still have the Construct to worry about. Chrome Mox also pumping the Construct a bit, as well as an LED and another Chrome Mox, both Costing one thanks to Thalia here. Uh, there's the Seagate Restoration. This deck, it's a bit of a combination between the the normal Urza Echoes deck and just a, a more artifact focused Karn deck, as well as having some. Some Hullbreaker shenanigans, which probably that is why the deck never really took off, because it was just trying to do too much, too many things. I know the uh, the allure of just playing everything. Fantastic, but doesn't always work out, unfortunately. Now, double source to plowshares and a wasteland kind of putting Christian on the back foot here. Though, aside from the Thalia, I don't have that much going on myself. I will say it has been a while since I played this game, so... Thankfully, I don't quite remember how this game goes. It's just good because that makes it a lot more fun to cast as well. I always hate casting my own games because... Like, usually when I cast them, I know what's going to happen. Uh, I know the lines. And it just kind of take the, takes the fun out of it, you know? But thankfully there has been a bit of time. No, not everyone would say, thankfully. <laughs> There's been a, a bit of time between recording this and actually uploading it. People all anxiously waiting their matches. Well, they are definitely coming. I've been uploading a bunch of videos. I think this is the 14th video this year. And we are still in the first week, so <laughs> definitely moving along at a, at a steady pace here. Now, Stoneforge Mystic coming down on my side. Finding Better Skull. Just trying to get a, a clock going here. Scavenging Ooze coming down is going to help take care of any graveyard shenanigans, most likely. Uh, a Echo of Eons. Because exiling artifacts not that great when your opponent's playing a bunch of Karns, which for some reason actually specifies that you can also just take them out of exile. Which definitely helps the card a lot. Better Skull coming down with a nice. Small, purple little 
uh, germ token there. Alex providing the deck, but not the germ token, unfortunately. Big swing here, coming in. I'm gonna put Christian down to ten. A lot of pressure coming down. And Christian definitely needs to start drawing something if he wants to come back in this game. He has mana. He has mana for days. That's pretty much all he has right now. I think I saw a Karn in his hand. Which at this point he probably should be playing. I'm going to tap the Ancient Tomb. I'm going to take two damage from that, and is going to play the Karn. Now, Karn plus LED means you have a bunch of mana to wish for pretty much anything you, you could think of. Total of five mana, so not enough for Microsynth Lattice. Not that you would go for a Microsynth Lattice in this situation, because Karn can just die and then your Microsynth Lattice doesn't really do much. And Snaring Bridge, however, much more useful. It's going to take four mana though, thanks to the Thalia still. But Christian is now hellbent and able to breathe a sigh of relief, it looks like. Now, unfortunately, Maverick doesn't have a lot of artifact hate in the main. Some lists play Knight of Autumn, but I don't recall if this version does. I don't think it does. Alex didn't have the prismatic endings yet, so that is not an option. Wasteland is a pretty good one though, just kind of slowing down Christian's comeback here. Sitting on three mana. Shadows on one being played. Yeah, Maverick can do a pretty good Death and Taxes impression if it wants to. But sometimes it wants to. Karn plussing on the batter skull, which means the germ loses the equipment. Fun little interaction there. Batter skull does become a 4 4 with no text until end of turn, and then it's just an equipment on the field. Knight of Reliquary coming down. Again, not really doing all that much. If there is an answer. I need a Green Sun Zenith right now, or just straight up draw the answer, but it's likely going to be a Green Sun Zenith. I'm trying to think. Was there a Knight of Reliquary in the deck? I think there was. Yeah, you still need to draw it. Christian looking for a sideboard card here. Just now that there is an Ensnaring Bridge, Michael Sint Lattice might actually be good, assuming Christian can even cast it. Which, it's 7 mana right now. Engineered Explosives on 1. I'm not really sure why it's on one though, because there there is already a one drop on the f there's already a chalice on one on the field, and the only one drop that the engineer explosives would get right now is the noble hierarch.
So, yeah, I guess the engineer explosives doesn't really have a way to get on two. If it could, if you could put it on two, that would have been incredible here. Just almost completely wiping my side of the board here. Knight of Reliquary going to turn a forest into a horizon canopy and then sacrifice it to draw a card. Just trying to find that answer before Christian manages to close out the game here. Christian at seven, really close. That ensnaring bridge doing all the work right now. Now, Remnant Excavator combined with Horizon Canopy is potentially going to draw a bunch of cards. Is it enough? All Breaker coming down. Now the engine is offline again. Greenson Zenith coming out. Do I not have the Knight of Red Bear? Uh, no, no, not the Knight of Red the Knight of Autumn. I I thought I had the Knight. We don't have enough mana. Yeah, maybe I'm not playing it. You have to forgive me, I just don't remember. If it's in the deck. Maybe we can see it. Electro Oof might be useful here regardless. Okay. I am playing the Night of Autumn. I just completely forgot that I was playing the Night of Autumn. That's kind of the drawback of playing a deck you're inexperienced with. You just completely forget what your options are here. Uh, Gadok Teague is not the best get. In hindsight, Gadok Teague probably the worst get here. I should have just kept the Greens and Zenith, played land next turn, and then just Knight of Autumn the and Staring Bridge. But hindsight, as they say, is 2020. Yeah, unfortunate. Because without the ensnaring bridge, would that have been lethal? I think it wouldn't have been lethal just yet. But I would definitely have been in a better position than I am now. So, yeah. Unfortunate, but it happens. It happens. And the misfortune playing a deck you're unfamiliar with. What is. What is that? Okay, I, I completely forget what that card is. I think it it affects draws. It's a combination with Hallbreaker. It's a two mana artifact. Maybe I can try and find it. And we go in legacy.
That is an anvil of Bogarden. Let's see, anvil of Bogarden. Right. It it turns every. No, you draw an extra card every turn, and then discard a card. So, in, in addition to your draw, you get a loot, but unfortunately, because of Hull, Hull Breaker, that means I just end up discarding whatever I draw. So that just locks me out of the game. And... There's just no way for me to, to get back from this. Right? I got, in theory, draw a source to plowshares, I guess. Kill the old breacher. Echo of eons coming down for for Christian as well. Which means I am now out of cards and I just need to top deck a sort of plowshares to do anything this game. Yeah, like I said, just a really unfortunate play and in a format like Legacy. One mistake can just end the game right there. So we'll let's run out for a bit before we move to game two. Getting my deck for those percentage points. Yeah, interesting card, Anvil. I think that was a card that he decided to add himself. Not sure if anyone else plays it. It is maybe a little dependent on Hull Breacher. <laughs> and again, it, it does help find the Hull Breacher. But it also helps at your opponent. So it's a, a bit of a double edged sword, I have to say. Potential upside is definitely there. I should also probably learn to concede sooner. I mean, I, I technically could still get out of this, but probably not worth it. Uh, go. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because of the because of the echo of eons, Christian now has cards in hand, and I can actually attack again. Of course, there is still a all breacher here, but having that said, that yeah, it's just. Just go face. Oh, I could have actually equipped Batter Skull. Then I think about it. There's Batter Skull. Not the best card in the phase of an Ensnaring Bridge, but not the worst either. Intuition coming down for Christian here. Going to find three hull breachers. Two go to the graveyard, and the third one goes to hand. Looks like he could probably flash. Yeah, he could flash it in before for blockers. Oh, 
I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there we go. Of course, a three mana, three two with flash. Definitely one of the more powerful effects of a legacy and vintage playable card. Especially in formats like Legacy and Vintage, where cantrips just completely dominate the format. Hellbre Hellbreacher is just a fantastic card. And yeah, that's gonna lock out the game, and we go to game two. Definitely not my best night, but. You know, we all have our off days, it happens. Let's see if we can pull it back for game two here. Channels on one is the start for Christian. Definitely a decent start against any kind of ramping. To get Reborn coming down untapped. And is going to cast Hullbreaker, a Lion's Eye Diamond, and just a, a, a quick clean Hullbreacher into Echo, and, and that's all she wrote. So, 204 Christian.